in this video I am going to discuss about scintillation detector okay before going to study scintillation detector let us see the one of the earliest form of radiation detectors <coughs> which was used by Rutherford Rutherford used a detector that is he has taken a scintillating material that is it is the material here they have taken zinc sulfate screen as a scintillating material and they used microscope and here let us suppose a radiation incident on this zinc sulfate screen that is on scintillating material then here we are going to observe a flash of light that is we are going to observe a scintillation scintillation means flashes of visible light that is when a radiation incident on the scintillating material then a flash of light is produced and in microscope they are going to observe this flash of light that means in microscope if they observe any flash of light it indicates that a radiation incident on the scintillating material in this way they are going to detect the incident radiations and but it is very difficult to observe with eye and restrict the counting rate that's why we are going to study another detector which counts accurately okay now let us discuss about construction of scintillation detector that is it consists of a scintillating material material and next to scintillating material a photocathode is provided photocathode and next to photocathode a photomultiplier tube this is the photo multiplier tube is attached to the cathode and here the photo multiplier tube consists of a dynodes that is here I am going to represent it by D1 D2 D3 D4 and here D1 D2 D3 D4 are dynodes here once again I will explain construction of the scintillation detector here it consists of a scintillating material next to scintillating material a photocathode is attached and this photocathode is attached to the photomultiplier tube and this photomultiplier tube consists of dynodes D1, D2, D3, D4 okay this is all about construction of the 
scintillation detector and one more thing this scintillation detector is used for the detection and measurement of nuclear radiations such as alpha beta and gamma radiations to detect these nuclear radiations we are going to use scintillation detector and one more thing it works on the principle that when nuclear radiation is incident on certain material materials then they produce they produce fluorescence fluorescence these materials are called scintillators these materials are called scintillators these materials are called a scintillator okay it works on the principle that when nuclear radiation is incident on the certain materials they produce fluorescence these materials are called a scintillators okay now let us explain principle of scintillation detector that is here i am going to consider nuclear radiation here particularly i am going to take gamma ray photon and it is having energy e is equal to h nu and here i am going to consider scintillating material and this scintillating material it consists of a atoms here for the detection of gamma ray photons we are going to use sodium iodide trace of tallium this element is used for the detection of gamma ray photons here this nuclear radiation is going to interact with this scintillating material and it is having energy h nu here what happens the atoms of the scintillating material absorbs complete energy of the incident photon and they becomes excited atoms and then again they come back to the ground state by emitting a low energy photon that is here i am going to explain this is the scintillating this is the atom of scintillating material here this is the incident photon and it is having energy h nu here this atom absorbs complete energy of the photon and it jumps to the higher energy state and it is it is in the excited state now this excited atom comes to the ground state by emitting a photon of energy h nu here this incident photon is having high energy and this ejected photon is having low energy and one more thing we call this process as a fluorescence that is if the excitation takes place only for a singlet state we call it as a fluorescence if this excitation takes place at intermediate stage then we are going to call it as a phosphorescence let us suppose if this incident photon is in uv region after the effect of fluorescence here the ejected photon we observe this ejected photon in visible region okay this is all about the principle of the scintillation detector